Welcome again. Right now we're at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. The Trinity and renouncing sin revisited. Paul continues his letter to the believers in Corinth, saying, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, even as we obtained mercy, we don't faint, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Notice here that Paul says, we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness. So Paul here is obviously going by the law of God. He's not going by the law of his conscience or just any old law that he pulls out of the hat, but he's going by the law of God. Like a lot of Christians today say, well, we don't go by the law at all. We just go by faith and by grace. Paul here really, really nails it down saying that we have renounced the hidden things of shame. If there is no law, how do you know what's shameful? And how do you know that it's wrong to walk in craftiness? Obviously, there is a law here, and Paul made it very clear that they have renounced those things. They have renounced them because they are evil, because the law of God says they are evil. Even if our good news, or gospel, is veiled, it is veiled to those who are dying. Paul said in the previous session that when the Torah is read, when Moses is read, the people put a veil over their hearts, okay? There might not be a, a physical veil like they put over the face of Moses back in the day, but the people put a veil over their hearts. And even today, sad to say, there are a lot of Christians who put a veil over their hearts when it comes to the things of Torah. And not only do they do that, but they go even to the point of saying that the Torah doesn't apply anymore, even though God said that it is eternal. Do you think God didn't know what he was saying? Do you think that God didn't realize what the future might hold? When God said that the Torah is eternal, everlasting, perpetual to all generations, do you think that he didn't realize what the future had in store? You know, obviously not. God knows the future. God knows everything, okay? He's, he has it laid out like a timeline right in front of him. From the beginning to the end, he's got everything in his sight. So Paul says, even if our good news is veiled, in context here, he is equating the good news, the gospel, with Moses, okay? Again, go back to the previous sessions. Just previous to this, Paul is talking about when you read Moses, a veil is coming down over someone's heart. And in that context, Paul says here, it is veiled to those who are dying. What is veiled? The good news, the gospel. So the good news, the gospel is always and was always to turn from your sin, to turn from your selfish ways, to turn from your ways and to turn to God and to follow the law of God, to obey God. Therefore, Paul here makes it very clear in context that the gospel and the reading of Moses is synonymous. So Paul says here, even if our good news, our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are dying, in whom the God of this world, what does it mean the God of this world? Well, the God of this world is a phrase referring to the devil. It is referring to what other scriptures might call Prince Mestema or the Prince of the Air. It is the God of this world, okay? It's talking about the God of this world, meaning the material world, the sinful world, has blinded the minds of the unbelieving. It's very important to have your mind enlightened and not to be blinded. Okay, if you're blinded, you don't see the light. You are not illuminated. You are not knowledgeable of God. You don't know the ways of God. You don't know. You don't really truly know. You don't see the way things really are. So it's very important to pray that the blinders be taken off of people and that they are able to see which means they're able to hear, understand, and apply what they hear. That the light of the good news of the glory of Christ, who is, oh, this is Christ, who is the image of God, 
Now, this is another whole huge topic, but I'm just going to touch on this just a little bit. You know, you have a lot of people that believe that Jesus is part of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Then you got people who believe that Jesus is just a human being and, and, or he's just a prophet. And so what is the truth here? Okay, the scripture says very clearly here that Christ is the image of God. Put it this way. Suppose you're watching this video and someone comes up behind you and says, who's that? What are you watching? Who is that? You can say, well, that's Christopher. But is it really Christopher? Is it just pixels, colored pixels on a screen? Or is it really Christopher? Or you can put it this way. You can have a picture up on your mantle and it's a picture of, you know, old Uncle Jack. And someone might come and say, who's that? And you can say, that's Uncle Jack. Is it really Uncle Jack? Or is it the image of Uncle Jack? You see what I mean? So you got... It's the same thing. It's just the way you look at it. You can say, well, that's not Uncle Jack. That's just a piece of paper with color on it. I mean, that's not really Uncle Jack. But another person will say, yeah, that's Uncle Jack. Okay. So Jesus, Christ is the image of God. Okay. It doesn't say that he is God the Father. It says that he is the image of God the Father. You can point at Jesus and say, that's the Father, just like you could point at the screen right now you're looking at and saying, that's Christopher. Is it really Christopher? Is it really Uncle Jack? Well, not really. No, it's just a, it's an image of Christopher. It's an image of Uncle Jack. In the same way, Jesus is the image of God. So once again, even if our good news, our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are dying in whom the God of this world, the devil, has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, that the light of the good news, the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should not dawn on them. The devil does not want the light of the glory of Christ to dawn on the unbelievers. He wants them to remain in darkness, to remain in ignorance. For we don't preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus our Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Seeing it is God who said, light will shine out of darkness. Again, Paul quotes the Torah here, Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, to substantiate his doctrine. Who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And seek God while he may be found. And if you seek him with all your heart, if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he promises you he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.